Yo guys, what's going on? Robert Warshak here, and I'll be going over is Warcraft Rumble pay to win? Very common question. I'm getting very reasonable question. People don't don't you don't want to invest your time into a game that's just the whole point of it's trying to extract every single dollar from you, and there's no way to progress without spending money. I've been playing the game for about six to seven months now. I played in the closed alpha, I played in the beta, I played in the soft launch, and now we are at the global release. I have quite a bit of time into the game. As you can see, I'm getting close to Anixia already. This is the very end game content at the moment. I've done the entire PvE campaign. I've done a lot of the heroics so far. And a surprising factor is I've spent no money. <laughs> I am a completely free to play player doing this. So it can be done. There's definitely ways to play this game in which you spend no money. But let's break down how generous the game is, how you get currencies. And what is the pay to win aspect here? All right, so if we head to the shop, which is called the grid. Things cost gold. Your gold can be found in the top right. And the game gives you gold for free through playing the campaign, the PVE mode, going through the heroics, doing PVP, clicking on this free button every four hours, which sometimes can give you 50 to 100 gold. There's arc light surge events on two different zones, which give you 40 gold each, five zones, and this happens twice a week on Thursday and Sunday. So the game does give you a good amount of gold and it gives you it in a continuous flow. It doesn't shove it down your throat, but by all means, for a free game, it gives you a lot of gold. So with this gold, this is how you purchase new leaders. This is how you buy new minis. This is how you purchase talents for your minis to make them stronger. This is also how you level your minis up on the grid. As you can see for talents, it's 250 gold. This is a little bit pricey, but each unit can have a max of three talents. Only one talent can be chosen at a time. So you don't need all three talents for every unit. You just need the one or two that you would really like. And then, you know, later on, if you have the extra gold you can spend it there to unlock leader minis it's 120 gold and then you permanently have them pretty good deal uh, i was able to unlock every single mini uh, in the game in the first two weeks of playing uh, again i did not spend any money doing this it just the game does a pretty good job at, at giving you enough gold if you spend it correctly to be able to get done exactly what you need to get done i have a tip video going over like gold spending and how to like progress your account quickly and, and other videos but this one is mainly targeting everybody saying it, it is or is not pay to win also there is nothing in the game that you can't buy with currency given to you by playing the game and that's one of the major factors of pay to win to me do you need to purchase something in the game that you don't have access to unless you spend money and the answer to that is no everything in this game can be accessible to anyone by just playing it however that doesn't mean you're going to progress the same rate as somebody who has spent a hundred dollars they're going to be able to kind of get ahead of you in the sense of uh making their minis higher level but they're just going to end up out almost out leveling a zone and then like you're just like blowing through the content it's not challenging you're just steamrolling it right so if that's fun for you then you can do that um, but if you don't want to spend any money, the game is slightly more challenging, but it's not undoable. I mean, obviously I did it. So looking at like the prices of things and does it feel good with a free to play game that you don't need to spend money on and trying to get that free to play player base, but also it's a company that needs to make money. There's a fine line to walk, right? Not every player is going to spend money, but the prices need to be right to where the players, if they do spend money, it feels good. So during the beta, these bundles were actually pretty bad deal it was almost better to just buy gold and not buy the bundles however right before launch they heard our feedback and they actually reworked all of the bundles to just be better and then they actually backwards compensated everybody who bought bundles or spent any money and like compensated them for the bad bundles that they did not buy during the beta so really good gesture from the company really nice thing to do they're obvious like they want to give you the value you know that you're spending and honestly these bundles are a pretty good deal if you are thinking about you know buying stuff but the best value is the arc light booster that's by far like if you're going to spend any money the 20 dollars permanent account boost is like the best thing you can do you don't need to spend anything after that if you don't want to that that account boost permanent per permanent account boost is insane so also the game gives you basically your three quests per day you can do this is free xp and then sometimes at the end of it you get like a leader choice this right here is worth 120 gold again for free all you need to do is just basically play the game uh to get all of these takes five to ten minutes maybe and so again the game in my opinion feels 
pretty generous for being a mobile game that doesn't cost any money to play. Going through some of these zones, a lot of players on Reddit, I'm seeing, hey, this zone is impossible. There's no way to get past it without spending money. All right. Well, that's not true. <laughs> uh, basically, you will eventually hit a wall in PvE, but it won't be for a while. Uh, as you can see, if you look at the picture of a unit and then look at the number, it'll show like basically how hard that should be for you. So gray is like very over leveled, should be pretty easy. Green is like should be easy. Yellow is like yellow slash green again around your level. Orange should be pretty difficult, if not hard. And then red is kind of your cutoff point. Red is where the boss is going to be extremely difficult unless you know exactly what you're doing and you have a really good team comp for it. When stuff like this is red, and you feel like you've run into a wall for PvE, there's a million other things you could do in the game to help, like, do other things, right? So if you have a red quest in World of Warcraft, do you just quit because you can't buy, because it feels like you have to buy the two levels you need to do it? No, you go off and do just other quests or kill other things. So there's other things you can do are stuff like dungeons, where you can permanently increase the level of your minis and leaders for free. Again, it doesn't cost anything to do a dungeon, and you permanently get leader bonuses forever. You can also do PvP. The PvP rewards you with, again, more gold, 750 gold, modest tomes, and it's a really, really good experience for your leaders. They actually recently changed PvP, so now from brackets like 0 to 1,000, everybody is basically scaled at level 1. Like your opponent and you are all, every mini you play, regard, they could be level 9, 10, 20 minis on your opponent's side, they are scaled to level 1. Then from like 1,000 to 2,000, everything's like level 2. And then 2,000 to 3,000, everything's level 3. And this goes up to, I believe, level 5. And then after that, PvP changes a bit. But for 99.9% .9 of players, this new PvP change will be like really good for you for the first couple months. So I'm seeing, again, a lot of comments on Reddit about PvP is super unbalanced. Your opponent has all these minis that are higher level than you. And uh, if PvP is horrible, it's only pay to win. Literally impossible. Everybody is scaled to exactly the same level. So if you're just getting dumped on in PvP, it has nothing to do with the other minis are just better than yours. You're, you know, every a lot of players are new, probably not that great yet. And some may, you could be playing against somebody who played the game in alpha or beta or soft launch. So it's just crazy. Some of these complaints about level differences when it literally like it can't even happen. However, something that can happen is talents. So if you're playing against somebody and they have spent a shit ton of money, for example, and they've unlocked, you know, all their minis are like, let's say level one, you know, everybody's level one, but they have all their talents and you have no talents. Well, I'm sorry to say that that talent, that person is going to be quite hard to beat. <laughs> they have an entire team full of talents and you do not. It'll be tough. However, once that player wins a few games, you will never match with them again. Like they are, they are going to move up the ladder and you will like, you know what I'm saying? Like not exactly every PVP match is going to be 100% fair. No game is literally no game is. So yes, there are unfortunate times when you queue into a player who just happens to do that, or you queue into a player and you have some time in the game, you have talents, but you haven't done PVP ever. So like, let's say you're level zero at PVP and you have a team full of talents because you played the game for a week or two, right? It doesn't take very long to get talents. And now you're owning the player who had just started and tried doing PvP. But again, things balance themselves out. You have a rank for a reason, and you get there quite quickly once like you start playing the game. If you're interested in knowing which talents are good, again, I made a video on that as well. So feel free to check that out. I pretty much covered everything that regards around like money and spending and like where that can get you in the game. Uh, the last thing is it's probably gonna be a question is like where do you get talents? And they're too like, you know, they're too hard to get. Or I don't know how to get them. Uh, you basically get a talent once you upgrade a unit to uncommon. So a common unit, let's just go to our thing here. A common unit's going to look like this. You have info. It's not going to show like any upgrades here, right? You hit upgrade and you need basically these stars. So once you get, I like to think of it as three copies of a mini, it makes it uncommon. And then you unlock one talent slot. Then the next time you need 10 stars or 10 copies of that mini to turn it into a rare and so on. And then you can click this icon, this little I like this little learn more button, and it'll show you the three talents that you have a choice for for a mini. And in order to get these talents, once it is uncommon, again, you go to the grid 
and you hope to God that it pops up in the grid. For example, in the grid, here's a talent for this terrible unit here. <laughs> this unit's so bad. Uh, imitation, bear gains taunt. So if I wanted this talent, which you don't, it's horrible. Uh, you'd spend 250 gold on it. You'd have it permanently. And again, you can pick one of the three talents that that person has. If you don't want this one, but you want a talent this guy does have, but it just doesn't show it, you kind of just have to wait for the shop to show you the talent that you want. Once you purchase a talent, so once I buy this talent, let's say I did, it won't show me another talent from this person again until I level him up to rare, in which I then have a new talent slot available, and then this guy will show talents again. So knowing how to min-max your grid a little, I wouldn't say min-max, but knowing how to control your grid to show you stuff that you want more likely, pretty useful. So to wrap it up, is this game pay to win? It's pay to progress faster, but there's a lot of, you can easily play this game free to play like me. Very similar to Hearthstone, which is my main game. Hearthstone, if you want every card in the game and to be able to play everything, yes, it costs money. Can you win with a deck the game gives you and spend no money and still play a really, really powerful deck and hit the highest ranks? Yes. So with that, if you have any questions or comments on anything, leave it in the comment section below. That's what it's there for. I'll be happy to try to get back to each and every one of you. And with that, as always, guys, happy whatever the hell day it is.